Hi, and thanks for joining me today. So today we're going to talk about rosining our bow. Of course, this is important to any string player and certainly, of course, any cello player. And there are a number of different approaches and um, procedures that are out there. And here's kind of an over overview of how I handle it. So really the first question is, how often should we rosin our bow? There are different views on it. Some advocate rosining very frequently, pretty much every time you pick up the cello to play at all. Uh, others go to the opposite extreme, uh, rosining only every few weeks or so. In my view, I would say rosin your bow as often as you think you need to. Uh, if anything, maybe a little bit more often than not, but again, when you think you need to, when it's not gripping the string as much as you think it should or as much as you'd like it to. Okay, here we have bow and some rosin. And when we're ready to actually apply the rosin to the bow, um, there are sort of two schools of thought. One, in, what, one advocates um, using long, smooth strokes of the bow against the rosin, like so. Nice and smooth, going along the entire length of the bow. Another approach is to sort of layer it on with short strokes like so, sort of rubbing it on, if you will. Is there a big difference? I suspect not. I will say that if you have a new bow or a bow that's been uh, newly rehaired and there is a little or no rosin on it, what I generally do is I start with this the short rubbing kind of strokes and then I finish it off with the long strokes to make sure that the application along its length is pretty smooth. Okay. Um, some people prefer to instead of rubbing the bow on the rosin to sort of do the other way around is, and that is to hold the bow stationary and to apply the rosin like so Again, I'd say that's a matter of preference. I don't know, or I don't believe that either one is superior to the other. Go with whichever one is more comfortable for you. Now, should we score the rosin first, the very first time we get a new cake of rosin? In other words, do we uh, take something to, uh, to roughen the, uh, the surface a little bit? I never do. I've never had any issues with it. Some people advocate it. Um, I've never seen that it has made any real difference. Nobody has ever demonstrated to me that, it's make, that it makes a real difference. Certainly, I would say there's no harm in it, but I also see no need for it. You'll notice also that as I'm applying the bow, I'm just holding it in my hand without any special grip or anything. Uh, I extend my finger to make sure that I can continue to apply pressure along the length of the entire bow like so. Now some people advocate holding the bow as you would when playing it and, and sort of bowing across the rosin as though you were playing on the cello. Um, I personally don't like it. I'm, uh, you know, perhaps that works. Uh, again, it seems uncomfortable and, and, and I never feel like I'm getting good pressure of the bow against the rosin. Uh, if it works for you, by all means, uh, but personally, I would recommend this approach, like so. As you're rosining, be sure to get the entire length of the bow hair. That includes the very, very edge near the, near the frog. When you're right at the frog, you might want to use very gentle, uh, careful strokes so that you don't uh, break off pieces of the rosin cake with the metal ferrule. And of course, you want to go all the way to the tip. You'll see, let's see if I can show this, right? The tip of the bow, um, the, uh, the, the hairs sort of overlap the, uh, the wooden part of the tip, right? So I'm making sure to actually get right up to the very end of the hair, right up to where it is inserted into the tip of the bow. Once in a while, we actually find ourselves bowing on that extra little bit there. So you want to make sure that it will grab the string just as well as any other part of the bow does. 
Here's a question that comes up occasionally. Should you use cello rosin or bass rosin? I know that uh, uh, the great cellist David Finkel uses a, a custom mixture of cello and bass rosin. I don't know how easy it is to obtain that or to make it, um, but I find that every maybe third or fourth time that I rosin my bow, I actually do use some bass rosin, and I think that it does help. So that's a possibility that you can keep in mind as well. Okay, and finally, what brands should we use? Well, there are two that I use most often, but that really has more to do with what I have in hand more than anything else. Uh, I've had occasion to use uh, quite a lot of varieties over the years. Uh, I have yet to see any one or two that really stand out uh, as being particularly better than any others. This is also a really personal choice depending on quite a lot of uh, variety of factors. Uh, some of the factors can be how aggressively you play, uh, what kind of strings you have on your cello, um, the time of the year it is, the, um, the environmental conditions uh, that you, that, uh, in which you live, things like um, temperature and humidity. Uh, so uh, almost any brand that you select will probably be at least okay, uh, but, but feel free to experiment so that you find the one or ones that you like the best. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. You can reach me um, through a comment on this video here on the site. Uh, if you prefer to reach me through my website, uh, you can do so. The, the address is indicated below. So thanks again for joining me, and I hope to see you again next time.